It's the only thing the world is talking about, the coronavirus, and it's here in Kansas. Today, we take you from Italy's warning to America, stay to what you need to know to stay healthy as this virus spreads. That's what we're talking about right now on Kansas Week. Southwest National Bank has proudly served Wichita and its surrounding communities for over 100 years. We are happy to support KPTS, public television for Kansas. Welcome to a very special episode of Kansas Week as we come back from hiatus. I'm Pilar Pedraza. We're breaking our format today because there's an issue that's changed our world over the last month. And here to help answer your questions about the coronavirus and your health, I'm joined by Dr. Gerald Minns, the Dean of KU Med School here in Wichita. Before we start our Q&A section though, we're going to take a look at the latest numbers coming from the state on the coronavirus. Today's uh, number of positive uh, test patients are in the uh, state are 44. Of those 44, 23 are in Johnson County, 9 in Wyandotte. Sedgwick County reported its first case this last week, and Butler County now has two cases. The number of positives is relatively stable at about 4%, so you can kind of figure out what that is. But we're getting into the hundreds uh, of negative test results. Today, Kansas has only one death from the coronavirus, a 72-year-old man from Wyandotte County. Kansas Health Secretary Dr. Lee Norman says a more important number right now than the number of positive tests is the number of test kits Kansas has left. We're precariously low on the test kits. We put out a, appeals through our supply chain. He says if the state doesn't get some new test kits by Sunday, it will have to start limiting tests to those who are sickest and likely hospitalized. Several commercial labs, though, are coming online for testing, although these tests are more expensive than the KDHE tests, which are free and take longer to get results. Our average turnaround time is 1.05 days, so just think of it as a day turnaround time on a lab test. And just some of the many things that Dr. Norman is talking about, all relating to social distancing and the requirement for that. You can see that on the desk today, we're kind of farther apart than we normally are, and there's a reason for that. One of the big issues, though, uh, that we're getting questions about is, okay, it's been in eastern Kansas, now it's in central Kansas. You know, we've got cases in Butler County, we've got cases in Central County. What does that change for us? Why does that change things for us? The first cases that we had in Kansas were people who had been traveling, um, mainly to the East Coast and to Florida. And so they didn't get it here, they got it somewhere else, and when they got here, they got sick. That was concerning enough, but now we're seeing cases like the one we have seen in Sedgwick County, which there was no travel involved. So that means she got it here in Sedgwick County, most likely because she says she hasn't been traveling. So that means now it's in the community. And unfortunately with this condition, a small percentage of people get really sick and most of them don't even really know they have much going on. So for every person that gets sick, you can probably count at least four or five who don't feel sick and they're out there spreading it to others. And so that's why we're putting so much emphasis on this social distancing. Assume you have it and behave as if you have it because we don't really have enough tests to determine who has it that isn't sick. There's been a lot of questions about the tests. I know you've been getting the questions mm -hmm. just like we have. Are local hospitals able to do the tests themselves at this point? The hospitals can do it. Um, but all of us are struggling getting enough of the specimens that we need to run it. The, the swabs we use to swab the nose and stuff. So the hospitals are mainly using it for the people who come in sick. We don't have enough to do swabs on people who are just a mild illness, but not too bad, don't need to be in the hospital. And that's where we're all struggling. Okay. What if somebody thinks they had it, say in January or February, before we were running tests, what should they do? Well. We don't think anybody here had it in January because we would have seen it before that. We would have seen the really sick people coming to the hospital. So we're pretty sure we may have had a few cases, but that's long enough they should be over it and probably immune from it. Mm -hmm. We don't know that for sure. They had it way back in January. 
And that was going to be one of my questions. Mm -hmm. Say you catch COVID-19, you go through it, you get better. Are you immune to it or not? We think so. The part of the problem with this virus is it didn't even exist prior to December 30th. And that was first in China. And of course, you know, the outbreak was in China. So all we have in terms of the science of this virus is what occurred in China and now what's occurred in Italy. In this country, we're just getting the ability to study this disease more and know things like that. Um, so a lot of it's uh, not quite worked out very well. Based on the data from China and Italy, we think the incubation period is about two weeks at most, probably on an average more five, six days. Okay. You talked about the shortage of equipment. Mm -hmm. And one, one area that we're hearing a lot about the shortage of is uh, protective gear for medical mm -hmm. uh, officials, especially mm -hmm. masks. Mm -hmm. um, Kansans like to help out. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple of folks ask me the question, can I make homemade cloth masks at home and take them to the hospital? If so, how do I go about doing that? Well, the cloth hospitals really don't filter the virus very well. So the mask we use in the hospital for our healthcare providers is tested and certified. It has very small pores that are small enough that the virus could not be drawn into the air you breathe. The cotton mask, as you can imagine, a lot of the air goes through that. So the hospitals couldn't and wouldn't use a cloth mask. Now, there are also a lot of concerns that there are these cases out there that aren't being tested, but they're in the hospital. Wichita's hospitals are full. What's the status here in the city right now? Well, again, we don't, since we don't have as many tests as we like, we're not really sure what the, the degree of infection is yet. All we know is the patients who are sick enough that need to be in the hospital, we test those, and we know those are, have the virus. Um, we're not, we don't have enough kits to test other people just for mild illnesses. There's a lot of talk about staying home mm -hmm. and social distancing. Mm -hmm. What about outdoor activities like going to the park with your kids or taking the dog for a walk? Are those things that are safe to do? Generally, we think that respiratory illnesses as respiratory agents or viruses are less easily obtained if you're out in the open in the sunshine. But I can't say it's not obtained out in the open. Mm -hmm. So it, again, it kind of gets down to how close you are. If you're really up close to someone, they cough or sneeze, it doesn't matter whether you're out in the, in the sun or you're in the house. You're, you're going to get some exposure there. So kids playing on the playground, good idea, bad idea? Oh, I, I think at this stage, I would just say if they're over there playing, um, particularly now that in this time when we have very few cases in Kansas and Sedgwick mm -hmm. County, now, if the, the number of cases gets a lot higher, we may have to reconsider that. Okay. So take it day by day, advice might change. Day by day, week by week, because the, if you um, remember, our first case in Kansas was December 7th, two weeks ago from tomorrow. March 7th. I'm sorry, March 7th. <laughs> and um, so now we're up to over 50 in just two weeks. So we're going to see this thing climb. We don't know how the rate of climb is going to be. That's no. what we're watching. Okay. Well, we've talked a lot about social distancing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for a lot of people, social distancing, flattening the curve, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> they really can't understand it. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of different ways of explaining it. The Washington Post had, I think, probably the most interesting one. I want to show you what we're talking about. I want to share this. It's perhaps the best visual description for what that means. It's an animation from the Washington Post. Imagine all those dots are people moving around town in their daily lives. The orange ones are sick. In the upper left hand corner, this is normal activity. See how the virus spreads quickly? If we move to the right, that's if we used a forced quarantine for anyone showing signs of COVID-19. Notice it doesn't really slow the progress much. But as we move to the lower two panels, these are with that social distancing you've been hearing about. On the left, that's moderate social distancing closing down public spaces like we're seeing now and staying home more. Notice how much slower the disease spreads? On the right, that's extreme social distancing, with almost all of the population working to stay in place. That's what shelter-in-place orders are designed to do. And we're not talking about a shelter-in-place order here in Kansas mm -hmm. at this point. It's just stay home as much as you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as we move forward, what happens if people aren't following that suggestion? Well, that's the danger we're all trying to avoid. 
So that did not happen in China. And so the number of cases on its curve went up real fast and real steep. And that's when the hospitals were overwhelmed and just didn't have enough beds, didn't have enough ventilators. So we're doing our best to try to make sure that doesn't happen here. That's, that's why we keep asking people to voluntarily stay at home as much as possible. Don't go out for things that really aren't necessary. If there's, you need bread and milk, go out and get it. But probably isn't the best time to just go walk in the mall and look around. Well, can't walk the mall because they no, close the malls. That's why it's closed. <laughs> We're trying to encourage people or give them less incentive to go out so that we hope that curve will go up slower. We will still have infections and cases, but we hopefully won't overwhelm our healthcare system. And that's really the main concern mm -hmm. is not preventing everybody from catching right. this because chances are they're going to. Right. It's making sure the rate is slow enough the hospitals can keep up. That we, our healthcare system can accommodate it because our healthcare system isn't built and structured for big surges like this. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about a potentially big surge. That's certainly what they've dealt, been dealing with in Europe. That's exactly what Italy is. For whatever reason, they didn't get this under control fast enough and it's just exploded in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm. And China, obviously, too. Yeah, yeah. And let's talk about risk factors. There are a lot of risk factors that make you more susceptible to complications from this. What are those? Well, again, we're mainly going on the Italy and China data. We'll see if that applies equally here. It seems that the elderly, um, the older you get, the more likely you don't tolerate this virus very well. So it's like over the age 75 or 80s where we've seen the most mortality from this illness. It doesn't mean that young people don't get sick with it, but most of them don't get near as sick as the elderly. And we think that if you have immunosuppression from cancer medications or you're taking uh, corticosteroids, prednisone, drugs like that that is used to suppress your immune system for other conditions you have probably make you more susceptible, more likely to get an illness. We, and there may be others we just don't know yet. I was going to ask, what about autoimmune issues, which is usually in a case of the immune system overacting? But the drugs we use are to bring it down. Unfortunately, they reduce the ability of the body to respond to other agents that we want them to yeah. respond to. So say you have one of these high risk factors, the asthma mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. high blood pressure that mm -hmm. you talked about, mm -hmm. but it's under control properly mm -hmm. with medication. Mm -hmm. Are you still at high risk? Well, but it's under control because you're probably on those medications that are dialing back your immune system. And so that's why we think you're a little bit more susceptible. Okay. How long does the virus stick around in the air on services? Have we figured that out yet? We think we have. So if someone is around you that has it and they're coughing, we think the particles that are infectious actually settle down pretty quickly. And that's why we set this six foot. <laughs> we think by the time it travels six foot, it's all settled to the ground and it's really not in the air anymore. So. In terms of the incubation periods, thought to be around five to six days on average, but it can be up to 14 days. So that's where the 14 day quarantine comes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, those were there other questions you had about what, how the virus behaves? Well, let's talk about the symptoms. A lot mm -hmm. of people wondering, you know, okay, so it sounds a lot like a flu, it sounds a lot like a cold. Mm -hmm. Let's walk through the progression of this illness. If you catch the coronavirus, what's it like at the beginning, the middle, and the end? Well, probably it may just start with a little fever and a little congestion, but as it progresses, you start getting uh, chest congestion, start getting cough and, and phlegm being coughed up. And as it gets really bad for the people who get bad, shortness of breath develops. You can't mm -hmm. get your air, and that's when they really need to go to the hospital and be evaluated because there are other things that can do that. Mm -hmm. But if you reach that point, don't just go straight to the hospital. We'd like you to call ahead and tell them you're on your way because if they know you might have it, they'll be waiting at the door for you to make sure we get a mask on you. Because again, we don't want to spread it in the hospital. Wow. Well, we've talked a little bit. We've kind of touched on how Italy has dealt with this. And I, I know Dr. Norman has uh, mentioned quite often at the KDHE that we're kind of following the same pattern in the United States that Italy did so far as a warning that we really need to take the social mm -hmm. distancing seriously. Mm -hmm. I have some friends 
in Italy, spoke with them earlier today, and they had some very serious warnings. There were a lot of smiles because they are good mm -hmm. friends of mine, but Laura Reinicoli from Nereto and Paola Colorito from Rome, they were very serious when they warned folks to stay home. Yes, things are not getting better now. And they are going to escalate this week because uh, since they like, locked down the Italy, people moved from north to the south and the people yes. in the south now is getting positive tests. Wow. That's the problem. Yeah. It, so it's going to, to last longer than expected. That's was, because yeah. you stop of the, every the third. Yeah, you've both talked about uh, the controls that are in place right now. Uh, you guys are under a kind of a permanent shelter in place order at the moment. Yeah. What's daily like life? Um, uh, Laura, I know you've got children. You're doing the homeschooling yeah. thing. <laughs> it's not easy because they are three. But I must say one thing. They are 11, 11 and 13. They never asked me to go out. They behave it better than old people, and this is my hope for the future. I never heard them complain about this. I explained that in the simplest way ever. They never, never, never um, complained. So what's your day like, Laura, right now? Uh, <laughs> I eat a lot. <laughs> Basically, it's um, chores and uh, homeschooling and playing with the kids and uh, try to save a little social life. And we go out uh, to buy supplies uh, one every three days, at least try not to bring virus inside. And, hey, uh, and I just want to clarify for the folks who are watching, you say once every three days, you're used to doing it every day. It's a little bit different than in the States. Most folks go once a week. It's, it's better to go less and yeah. to buy more. We have to stay home. Everybody on the TV is telling us that we have to stay home. But not, not, not everybody listens to this. And it is, it is important. I, can understand, I understand that being cooped up in a house all the day is it's not very easy, but we have to do it. Why do you think it's going so much longer than they originally expected? Because the, the same day that the Prime Minister, uh, Minister said stop everything, people traveled with the train from north yes. to south. And since yes. there are uh, people without symptoms that can be positive, they mm -hmm. uh, just spread it around uh, Italy from north to south. Yes. Uh, that's the problem. So you have the chance to tell Americans who are about, the, the experts here are saying we're about a month behind Italy. What would you tell Americans now at this point? Stay home. Yes. Please follow there the There isn't another thing to do. Stay home. Yes. Uh, stay home, not stay so close to the others. Wash your hands and please follow the rules because uh, I saw also in the states that someone still not believes this uh, this view, this uh, this this, pro this um, COVID, and I see people in Miami having fun because there is spring, spring breaks. No, this is the same mistake we made yeah. three four weeks ago. No, please follow the rules, and uh, please uh, try to protect the elders because. They are the most fragile, but it's very dangerous, especially for the elders. Yes, a lot of people died, are uh, unfortunately old people. No. Yeah, and so. the, the, the saddest thing is you die alone. Hey, that really stuck out for Laura. She talked about uh, folks dying alone. Uh, they're running out of cemetery space in Italy. <laughs> there are so many things that we could learn from Italy that might change the progression of the disease here. Exactly. What are some of those uh, lessons that are most important for Americans to pay attention to? Well, I think like she said, don't uh, imagine this is just a made up thing. It is real. 
and secondly, take heed of what they told you. Now's the time to do social distancing. Don't wait till it really gets bad, because by that time it's too late. So that's why so many states have already taken pretty serious um, interventions to try and get the people to stay home. So we need to take heed and learn their lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and as we move forward with all of this, what are the next steps that we should expect? Because Dr. Norman says there are going to be more cases. We're not done. Well, I think the next steps were things we hope we don't have to do here. I mean, if it gets really bad, there could be more mandatory. Right now, a lot of the things are voluntary. Some of the companies that have put people on fur furlough, was, it was voluntary by the company, and we weren't forced to do it. And I, don't, I think the state and the government doesn't want to have to force things. But I think in Italy, that's where they've gotten to the stage mm -hmm. where they almost have to do that. Yeah, I, I know they've made, it's mandatory in Italy. Um, in Germany, they're talking about mm -hmm. making it mandatory mm -hmm. statewide. They just mm -hmm. made it mandatory in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. So those mandatory rules are spreading, and we do have the mandatory rules to a certain extent in California now. Yeah, I mean, we're yeah. trying to do it where it's not mandatory and we, we're not totally prohibiting travel. So you can go out and mm -hmm. get things when you need it, but we don't want to get to the stage where the only way we have to control it is just mandatory quarantine every day. Yeah. yeah, when I was talking with Paula, one of the things that she said is that if they leave the house, they have to have their papers that say mm -hmm. that they're allowed to mm -hmm. do this or mm -hmm. that, whether it's going to the grocery store. She goes mm -hmm. to her parents' home to take care of her father, who is elderly. You have to have the permission to do that. She can't, you can't just go out on the street because mm -hmm. you want to take a walk. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, they also talked a lot about elders, and we've talked before about how as being over 70 is a particular risk zone mm -hmm. for this illness. A lot of it, though, is carried by youth. They talked about the kids mm -hmm. out at spring mm -hmm. break. Mm -hmm. So say you have adult grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Should they no longer visit? Should they curtail, curtail their visits to 10 minutes? Uh, what, what's the best advice right now? Because we know these are all changing by the minute. <laughs> Well, if they have anything that looks like a cold, they should not visit at all. Um, if they've been in contact with anybody that's got a cold, they should probably not visit. If they visit, they may take some things and leave it on the porch. <laughs> um, and if they do go in, they need to observe these hygiene things. It's, it may be implied, but it's probably not the time for hugging. <laughs> Assume you might have it if you go to see them. Mm -hmm. What about if you're in contact through your job with a lot of members of the public? Um, with my job, I have to travel to Topeka on a regular basis mm -hmm. to bring folks the latest on what's going on with all of this. Mm -hmm. But then I go home and my mother, who's in her 70s, lives mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. I've instituted a no-touching rule. Nobody's allowed to touch right. Grammy right now. Right. <laughs> right. And to some extent, you visiting other places need mm -hmm. to try to keep the six feet if you can. No handshaking. <laughs> have some antiseptic lotion, if you have to contact some things, surfaces that may be uncontaminated, have Kleenex. So if you do sneeze for any reason, it's hopefully caught in the Kleenex. Yeah, those, it's all we can do right now is hygiene. Okay, well we've talked about the hygiene and we've talked about the six foot rule. Mm -hmm. Another part of the social distancing that Dr. Norman has mentioned is a 10 minute limit on interactions with folks. What's the purpose of that? Well, again, there is, it's not like if I get within three feet of you, it immediately transmits. But the longer you're in, closer to people, just through talking or whatever, the more likely a little particle from their mouth or their breathing could carry the virus if they had it. So it's not a real scientifically derived <laughs> number. <laughs> it's a suggestion that we think would help. And perhaps also, I, I know the longer I'm around somebody, the more I tend to relax my barriers mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. maybe take a step closer. Yeah. Does that play a part in it? Probably. Human nature, we're trying to do things we aren't programmed to do normally. Mm -hmm. our, our usual behaviors, we're trying to reorient ourselves, and that's always difficult. Okay. So looking at the tests, the state is talking about if they don't get more tests, more of the equipment for the tests by this weekend, they're going to have to start curtailing who they can test. There are already a lot of complaints that not enough people are being tested. Can you kind of explain why we have the rules in place that we have? Well, we have to have tests to determine when someone is really ill and comes to the hospital, whether it's this virus or something else. So for those people, we have to have the test just to take care of them and then isolate them. 
Um, second level, we would be like we would like to be testing other people who have a mild illness again to see if they have it. And we need to isolate them, or whether they got some other cold virus that isn't a danger to the society. So we'd like to be testing more of those people. So they were doing some tests of those people in Johnson County, but now I think they've declared that only hospitalized mm -hmm. people will get tested. Yeah. And so that means people with a milder illness are out there and we don't know where they have this virus or some other virus. Yeah. Well, and they said that that changes because they know they have community spread there. Right. You said, we know we have it now here in Central County as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that perhaps testing gets pulled back in Central County at this point, or we just haven't reached those numbers? Well, we haven't reached those numbers, and we don't have very many tests. If we get more tests, I think we'd be much more liberal. Some of the communities in other states have actually had drive-through testing, mm -hmm. where people can drive through, and the threshold for testing is a lot lower than it is now. But I think they're running low on the test, too. Okay. So you brought up other states. How does our testing protocol compare with other states, as far as you know? Well, as, I, as far as I know, and I don't know theirs, theirs very well, but I think um, right now we're relatively liberal with the tests we have, but the fewer tests we have, we're going to get more stringent about who will test. Yeah. So what should people be most concerned about right now as we're moving forward? Mainly the things we talk about. We don't want that surge to develop which means we've got to slow, just like your video showed, we've got to slow it down. And the only tool we have to do that now is just have less dense people around each other. So limit your going out to shop, limit your trips out of the house to the necessities. And when you're out in the, in the shopping centers or whatever, out at events, try to keep that distance, stay there, as briefly as you can and get your business done and get back home. All right. Well, Dr. Gailmans, thank you so much for joining me. I've really enjoyed our conversation. I learned a lot. I hope you have as well. Uh, if you have any questions that we did not manage to answer today, we ask that you please send them to kansasweek at kpts.org. And for now, we hope you have a very safe week.